Hello guys, my YouTube squad, welcome back. As always, I'm Dan at Tringshu Repair and Key Shop. Good to see you guys. Now, today's video is a two for one special, two jobs. So starting with these wicked Red Wing Iron Rangers, and we're doing a conversion job on these. Stay tuned to see what that is. And these are very unique. These wicked Native American style moccasins, handmade, all right, with crepe sole, and we are giving these a new lease of life. Keep watching. See what it's all about. All right, gang, let's get to business. So our first job is gonna be our Red Wings. So let me just tell you a little bit about them. They're really cool. They've got a double leather toe cap at the front. Um, oil tanned leather on the uppers, amber harness leather, I believe. But anyway, we need to focus on the soles. So they've got Vibram rubber soles, Goodyear welted, with a separate heel block, that kind of construction. Now what the customer wants to do is convert them to a wedge. So who can guess what we're doing? We're using these cream Vibram Christie units, which you get on a lot of the other Red Wing shoes. Okay, so that's what the customer wants. I think it's gonna look fantastic. So let's get to it. First thing I'm gonna do is just whip out these laces because uh, they're all over the place. I don't want them to get caught in the machine. Okay, rock and roll. So first thing we're doing is taking our pliers and attacking this heel block. Now this is a solid rubber heel block that makes up, you know, what we're calling the heel block and the heel. Okay, and then we're getting our sole off. So we're just getting our cutter and we're cutting through what little stitches remain. A lot of them are worn through. And look, with all the stitches cut, watch how easily this comes off. Nothing, it just comes straight away. And that's because all the glue is just deteriorated. Except around the heel here, I'm just gonna heat that up um, to loosen whatever glue might be there because we have to be careful we don't pull away any of this heel rand because that's just glued in place. <laughs> it's like he's talking. Good day, sir. All right, so now that we're stripped down, well, we're not stripped down, that would be embarrassing. But now the sole is stripped down. Let me tell you where we're up to. So the cork, we're gonna replace the cork, but what I wanna show you here is that metal structure just there. That's your shank, and that's what gives you a structure in the arch support so it doesn't just collapse. But the shank is in place, it's solid, so we don't need to replace that. So just gonna whip out the cork, put some new stuff in, and then we can talk about the midsole. Right, old cork out, new cork in. So, I'm just gonna fill up our cavity with some nice fresh cork. It's gonna give these a new lease of life. Yeah. How's everybody doing anyway? So let's have a competition today. Let's see who can get the, uh, the much sought after accolade of Dan's comment of the day. <laughs> Let's see what crazy stuff you guys can come up with. Let me just talk about this. I'll show you this well, sort of in the middle of doing the cork. Our shank here is wrapped in fabric. Now you see this a lot on older shoes. Anti-squeak, basically, you know? Sometimes when the leather, I mean, even these, these are rubber soles, sometimes when the leather rubs on a metal shank or even a wooden shank, that's what we can call squeaking in shoes. But if everything's in nice and tight and glued together, that doesn't happen. But this is a nice little extra measure that they've put on. All right, so just while we're waiting for our corky cork to dry, let me talk to you about an important feature of this repair. So if we look on top of the shoe, 
imagine you'll see the stitches from the top okay now these are meant to be white i mean they're dirty and faded at the minute but they're meant to be white so we're going to sort that out and have them white again so you'll have heard me say before that we pick out the old stitches so it doesn't get in the way of the thread uh, which applies to every job, but especially if we've got white stitching on top because it's going to show up very prominently. So we want it to be perfectly. We're going to try and put the new white stitches through the existing holes so it looks good as new. Uh, so of course we've got to pick the stitches out now. Okay, so now our stitches are out. What we need to do now is just sand and flatten the cork and roughen up the rest of the shoe so we've got a rough surface to put the glue on for our midsole. So let's shoot over to the machine. Okay, rock and roll. So time to get our leather midsole on. Now, uh, not sure how much I said in the beginning of the video, but uh, these boots didn't originally have a leather midsole. So this is an upgrade. This is a brand called Wears good stuff it's just going to make the boot feel a bit more robust and uh, and comfortable so let's get sticky get some of our glue on okay so there we are we let it dry now just before i finish this little segment two things i wanted to address i just thought of the original heel rand is just coming away ever so slightly now that's going to have lasting tacks go through it i'm just going to put a dab of glue on it anyway so it all sits nice and in place as it should and in my last video <laughs> somebody actually asked can we see the glue pot being filled up so i'm gonna oblige you and show you how we do the glue pot okay guys here we go Hold on to your underpants, glue party. So I do, got a gallon tub of uh, Col de Cologne. Now this is just my go-to glue, a little bit more expensive, but it's very versatile. What we do, this is our, our pot entrance there, tip it up. And can you see the glue in there? All right, empty. Pour it in like that. This might take a moment. And can you see it filling up? Now what we're going to do, it's too full, right? It's going to overflow, right? Wrong. Pop it like that. And pressure, buoyancy, keeps it all like that. And it's just ready to come out of the dispenser as we need it. Let's move on. Okay guys, rock and roll. So our midsole's all on, so the next order of business would be to stitch it. But before that, I'm gonna clean up the uppers because uh, as I said, we're putting these nice white stitches around the edge of the outsole. So instead of getting them dirty at the end, I'm just gonna give these a clean now. Are we still rolling? Yes, we are. Okay guys, so to clean these, as I said, these are oil tan leather, amber harness leather. What we're gonna do is just take our Saphir. This is just a general all-purpose leather shampoo, but I find it's really good for oil tanned levers. So what we're gonna do is just take a dab of brush, get our foam all over the place. Doesn't really matter. Got the laces out so we can get to the tricky bit on the tongue. Okay. And just scrub all the muck out and especially get in between the seam of the welt there to get all the muck out before we get these stitches in. Oh yeah. Just picking up those keys. Okay, thank you very much. Do you like a receipt? Thank you. Uh, no, it's fine. Absolutely. Okay, and once we're done and all the grubs off, if there's any excess shampoo, just 
I'm going to take a cloth, wipe off the excess. And then to condition the uppers, we're going to use mink oil, which I don't think I've shown you before, but we'll do that at the end of the repair in about 30 minutes. All right, let's move on. Okay guys, so we're over here at the outsole stitcher with Ron. And now for the tricky bit, stitching on our midsole. Now, I only say tricky because if you remember, I said we're trying to stitch through exactly the same holes as the old stitches came out of. So if I can just show you on the bottom of the midsole, I've marked up where the old holes are. So just with a bit of engineering, we can adjust the stitch length that this stitch is gonna do for us, um, basically using this big lever. Okay guys, let's rock and roll. Okay, and there we go. Perfect. So we've just hammered the stitches flat. Now we need to put some last tacks through the heel round. And the reason being is we've just stitched up to there, which is 270 degrees around the shoe because it's what's called a 270 welt. Doesn't go all the way down round, sorry. So something has to hold on the heel section, so that's why we put some last tacks through there. One for luck. Okay, so for the final piece of the puzzle, getting our Vibram Christie sole on. So let's hit it. Okay, there's coat one. Now, because this bit's just cemented, I'm gonna give it two coats of glue. Once we've done that, we heat up the glue to activate it and stick it back together. Jeremiah was a bullfrog, was a good friend of mine. I never understood a single word he said, but I helped him drink his wine. Right, ladies and gents so we're on the home stretch so we're just going to give the upper some TLC now remember I said this is an oil tanned leather so it has that kind of um, well oily finish I was gonna say greasy but not particularly we're using mink oil okay so which is perfect for things like these red wings actually gives it a nice sort of waterproof element now you can put mink oil on of anything I'm just using a cotton cloth now you'll find that it doesn't really polish in it will sort of sit on the surface and leave a nice oily layer. And then that's gonna dry over time. Okay, job done on our Red Wing Iron Rangers. Nice conversion. Pretty cool, huh? Let's see if I can get that stitch in there for you. I think they've come out pretty nicely. All right, guys, now just before we crack on the next job, I'm going to take you outside. And the reason being is because so many of you have asked to see a bit of train, a tour of train. So we're not going to go for a tour, but it's the first time the sun's been out at the end of the day on a Saturday when I finish that I fancy a walk. And I just want to give you guys a little extra to look at. So let's hit it.
we're back. Big walk. That was about an hour condensed into, I'm not sure, probably about 60 seconds. I hope you guys appreciate the energy I put into these videos. Who am I kidding? I love making these videos. Let's carry on. All right, so moving on to our next job, we've got these Native American style moccasins uh, by a brand called Aromoc. Now they're cool for a reason. Firstly, I'll say the owner of the brand sadly passed away, so the customer's got a real uh, lot of sentimental value to these, can't get any more, which is why he wants to get them repaired. But they are almost a whole cut. Now a whole cut is when the uppers are made out of one single piece of leather, which is very tricky to do, obviously makes it very expensive. These aren't quite whole cuts, but I've taken the sole off of one already, so you can see this is all one piece of leather that wraps around to be the upper. Okay, so normally you wouldn't have that. You'd have a big gap in the middle and that's where it's stitched to the footbed, etc. So this just makes them very unique. I'm excited, so let's get on with the job. So what we're doing here, guys, is cutting through the threads that are holding the sole on so that we will be able to remove it. Okay, ladies and gents, so now we've cut through all the stitching. The only thing holding this sole on is the glue, okay? And it's the same kind of glue we're gonna to use to put it back together, heat activated. So it's also heat deactivated, right? So we're gonna take our heat gun, apply heat, that will loosen it enough so we can peel the sole straight off. All right, all right, rock and roll, guys. So let me tell you where we're at. Look at that mess. So these are all the old threads and they've gone straight through to the inside. So it's a Blake stitch construction. Uh, so we need to take all those out. And this is the old salt. It's all come off in one piece. Now I'm keeping this aside handy. Reason being, it's gonna be a little tricky to trim and shape the sole on this shoe once it's done. So I'm gonna make the sole, pre-shape it before we put it on. So this of course is gonna be our template. Okay guys, so next little step, we've got to create our sole. So we've got our leather midsoles. Yeah, it's two leather midsole jobs in one video, what do you know? So we've got our old sole crepe. We're gonna use it as a template, just pop it there. Easy peasy, really. Draw a line. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. He was a good friend of mine. You're all gonna have this song stuck in your head once I'm done drawing this line. <laughs> So for our second component of our sole, of course, we've got our crepe. So I've got my sheet here, and there is a top and bottom. This is the underside. This is the part that will go on the shoe. Exactly the same process. Take our template, which is now our midsole, draw a line around the crepe. So now we've got our outline, we can cut our crepe sole out. Now, what I'm trying to do, if possible, is cut this out perfectly so that I don't have to sand it on the machine at all. Because I might have told you before, when you sand crepe on the machine, it just melts and turns to rubbish and makes a mess. And uh, it's not the end of the world, but it's much nicer if we can just get a nice perfect cut here. Uh, I'll tell you what, my eyes are going funny staring at this crepe. Okay, ladies and gents, rock and roll. So next little thing we're gonna do before we put our sole together, let's do a bit of dyeing. So what we're doing is dyeing the edge of this midsole so that we don't have to color it once the crepe sole's on and risk messing up the crepe, making it look all messy. And we're also just gonna get some of this top section here because that will be ever so slightly visible once the sole's on. All 
right, that'll do. So we're just gonna let that dry. Next thing, get our glue on and put all our bits together. But before that, we just need to head to the machine and roughen up, or rather flatten out this side of the crepe so we've got a nice flat surface for the glue to stick to. All right, so glue time. We've got a nice full pot of glue. Once again, let's get sticky. guys so final bit of gluing of the day we're getting glue directly onto the uppers of our shoe because of course the sole is sticking straight onto that i don't know if i mentioned about this job when we started the leather midsole is an addition that the customers chose you know we had a couple of options um originally they were a single crepe sole so we could have gone for a single crepe sole again or a double crepe sole or a leather midsole and single crepe sole, which is of course what we're doing. Okay, so once that's dry, we can work at sticking it all together. All right, so now he's nice and hot. Stick it on our sole. Now, uh, no singing this time because I want to get this spot on and straight. Beautiful. I'm just going to give this a good whack to get all the edges down. I'll do. I think quick press as well. All right, so there's our sole on, our crepe leather hybrid construction. So now we've got to stitch it on. Now, originally they had a double stitch, double row of stitching, so we're going to replicate that. So let's head over to the Blake stitcher. Okay gang, so here at the Blake Stitcher, uh, that's actually two stitches in one video, isn't it? That's the first of this channel. For those of you who haven't heard me talk about a Blake Stitch construction before, it's where the stitches go through the inside of the shoe, through to the outside. So that's what we're doing. Um, now we've got no groove on our sole and we're doing a double stitch. It's gonna be a little bit challenging. So let's get our focusing hats on. Okay, rock and roll so sole stitched on and that whacking we were doing was to hammer down the stitching not necessarily on the top wouldn't do much because the crepe is so bouncy but to flatten the stitches on the inside so it's not uncomfortable on the customer's shoe uh, shoe foot <laughs> so just to finish up the job we're just going to give the uppers some tlc and then we're done okay guys so what we're going to need to condition these uppers uh mink oil again because these are an oil tanned leather this is like the uh, oil tanned leathers show isn't it and also neat's foot oil now um do you know what? that's the old soul adios soul i don't need you so these uppers are a leather that is called swiss hide and i believe just by the smell because they've got a very pungent smell almost like furniture 
woods. Furniture oil, um, in a good way though, smells nice, which means they've been tanned with Neat's Foot Oil. So we're just going to basically top up the Neat's Foot Oil, get some of those nutrients back in there that it was intended to have. Now we only need a little bit of this stuff. A little bit goes a long way. And it's just going to condition the oiled hide. And then we'll put a nice layer of mink oil on top of it. And if you haven't smelt Neat's Foot oil before, you'll know it when you smell it now. It's got a very distinctive smell. It's got a musky, woody smell. How can I help? Um, I left a couple of shears in here for Oh yeah. Happening. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Cheers, you too. Okay, now I've just given that five minutes to dry, so now we can get our mink oil on. I'm using Tarago's brand. It's quite nice. This stuff is actually um, really nice to use on things like car seats. If you have some leather car seats or leather jackets, um, I'll use it on leather jackets. It's really versatile stuff, goes on a lot of stuff. And once it's dry, it feels oily at first, but once it's dry, it just leaves it with a nice sheen. Okay, so I reckon, job done. So we are done with our job. New crepe soles double stitched on our arrow mocks with that new leather midsole in. And of course the uppers had their treatment. So that is the end of the video. Um, now you guys always ask me about the prices of the job. So today the Iron Rangers were 120 for the full works. And these arrow mocks also 120, exactly the same, very similar jobs. Uh, but that is the video. Thank you for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, hit like, it helps other people see this stuff. If you're new to the channel, Welcome and subscribe. I'm doing new videos every week. If you're one of my regulars, catch you next week. And I'll just finish by saying, if you have a job you want us to repair, get in touch with us on the Tring Shoe Rare Facebook page. That's the only place I can get back to everybody reliably. And um, I'll just finish by saying thanks for watching and cheers.